Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Lizzie, and if you cannot tell by the title of this video or the shirt that I am wearing, uh, this is going to be the first video in my next series where I review the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. So I am super excited to do this one. I absolutely love, obviously, the original film. I also spoiler for the future, love Wes Craven's new nightmare, um, but I have to be honest, I have not seen every single film in the franchise, there's quite a few, um, and so I'm really excited to watch all of them uh, and catch any that maybe I have missed. If you have not seen any of my previous kind of series reviews, I just recently did the Saw series, I've also done Scream uh, and Poltergeist as well. Uh, and the Paranormal Activity series as well. So yeah, make sure, I'll leave links to those playlists so you can check all those out. Um, I'm going to be doing this one in kind of like a going to the movies, come with me style, but just sitting down before I watch the film, kind of uh, talking about, talking to you first and then giving you my reaction after I've watched the film. Now I am definitely sure I've reviewed this one on my channel before. I'm pretty positive that I did it for 101 Days of Horror, but I thought that I would just still film this one anyway, um, just so that I can kind of try to give maybe more of an in-depth review and thoughts on it um, than maybe I have in the past. Again, I will link previous reviews as well. But yeah, I'm super excited to just start the series. But yeah, let's go ahead and just get into it. I'm gonna go have it on DVD right here. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into this. The kids of Elm Street don't know it yet, but something is coming to get them. <laughs> We just see cuts happen. Nancy, there's something wrong with you. You're imagining things. Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay, I just finished with rewatching the original Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, and just forewarning for this entire series, I'm going to be kind of going off of the idea that you have already seen the films. So just spoiler warning right away. I'm sure most of you have seen the Nightmare on Elm Street. So I wouldn't, shouldn't necessarily need to spoiler warn it, but the entire series is going to have spoilers. So uh, I really want to talk about this film almost kind of scene by scene. So we'll start with talking about, of course, opening scene of this film. It plays much like most horror film opening scenes where we're following this girl who you kind of expect it to be like a first kill scene. Uh, this is Tina, of course, and she is running from Freddy. And of course, at first you don't know that it's a dream, uh, but one of the things that, that definitely is a clue early on and something that I love and that they include in kind of all the dream sequences is this slow-mo run that Tina does, that kind of dream run of not being able to like run fast enough to get either to somewhere or in her case away from somebody which is freddy of course i absolutely love that and i'm sh and like first time watching this film you don't know that that's what's happening it's just kind of like a weird thing of okay because you don't know necessarily that she's in a dream and of course we find that out when she wakes up but it does but with that her waking up it does set up for the film to be much different because she's not killed off right away. So it kind of can give you this almost false sense of Tina being safe to kind of believe that she is going to be our final girl, uh, which of course is not what ends up happening with uh, the subsequent following scenes. Of course, there's kind of those in-between scenes where you know, Tina is telling Nancy and and their boyfriends about the dream and you find out a little bit that they've all had a dream, or at least that Nancy has also had a dream, which again, those little moments that are leading to 
future events. And then of course we get to Tina's death scene, which, which of course Glenn's death scene, which we'll talk about, is iconic, but I absolutely love Tina's death scene. I don't feel like it's talked about quite as much. Like it's definitely, people love the scene as well, but I don't think it's held up as high as Glenn's is. And I think that it should be because just the way that it shot with her, like flinging around the room and the fact that we're kind of going in and out of seeing her dream and what's happening with Freddy and the kind of outside world, the non-dreamland, and what Don is seeing, that uh, every time that scene gets to me and I absolutely love it. And it's again, kind of almost first time watching it a little bit of a shock because we've been set up to this point of Tina being safe. She's almost killed and then she's not. And now she's being killed in such a gruesome graphic way that I noted with this scene is the fact that Freddy really chooses to go after Tina first. I feel like he's going after these particular characters in a specific order and that he's really saving Nancy like the best for last because there's that scene where Freddy or Nancy is staying in Tina's bedroom and you see Freddy kind of come through the ceiling and it like stretches. And in that moment, he could have gotten her, but he chooses not to, and he ch chooses to continue to go after Tina. And I feel like that is a very telling moment for the kind of relationship, quote unquote, between Freddy and Nancy and his, and the fact that he's made this decision to go after these characters in a particular way because then of course he goes after Tina's boyfriend Don next who is being accused of Tina's death. He was there when all of this was happening um, and there's you know really no other leads no other witnesses but to go after him um, and so then Freddy goes after him next and of course I feel like we have to talk about the Holloway scene. This is another frequently clipped beloved scene that, and I love this one as well. Nancy is in school and this is immediately after, I, I apologize, I kind of skipped around because this is before Don's death, but uh, right after Tina's death, she's in school and she's listening to this kid give this, read this poem and she starts to drift off and if you play, pay close enough attention to the kid who's reading the poem, uh, he actually starts to talk about dreams, uh, which clever, clever writing right there. And of course, Nancy's drawn in by seeing the body of her dead friend in, seeing her dead friend in a body bag and being like hauled off. We have the iconic fuck your hall pass quote that is hilarious and just also makes Nancy, like that's such a lovable moment for Nancy, really shows this kind of like sassy, tougher side of Nancy uh, when she just kind of like goes off on that girl. And again, in this scene, it leads from one location to the boiler room, just like almost every dream sequence in this, it all continues to lead back to the boiler room, which of course becomes very important information later on in the film when we actually find out what happened to Freddy. And this is also kind of the first moment where Nancy starts to put things together a little bit. She purposefully burns herself to wake herself up out of that. And I love that because she doesn't necessarily know that she's dreaming. She doesn't necessarily know that's gonna work, but I think she has this kind of moment of, okay, remembering, you know, Tina was asleep and all of that. And she's just kind of like, well, you know, might as well give it a shot and it works. And she wakes herself up and then she's sitting there and she sees that she has this burn mark on her. Now, one of the scenes in this film that I always kind of forget about is the hospital scene. I don't know why, and I'm not the only one, 
because I've seen, I've listened to like podcast episodes and seen other people review this and I feel like a lot of people for whatever reason forget about that hospital scene. Like it's this kind of weird throw in. Um, we kind of get more of a glimpse into Nancy's relationship with her mom a little bit in that moment um, where her mom is really trying to not believe Nancy and what she says is going on and her mom would kind of basically rather believe that her daughter is crazy. Um, I hate using that term, but you know, that's what they say in the film, quote unquote crazy. So she sends her to this like sleep therapy and Nancy uses as an opportunity to kind of try to figure out what's going on where I feel like her mother is more so using this as an opportunity to just kind of try to get her daughter to sleep. But this is a moment where Nancy also gets a little bit more kind of also figures out a little bit more as far as coming in and out of the dream. She figures out that she can bring things back from the dreamland because she brings back Freddy's hat which is really cool um, and also this leads to us finding out more information about what happened with Freddy because her mom sees that hat she instantly recognizes it knows what it is um, and for a while here she's still trying to push that information away she refuses to tell Nancy anything that's going on and Nancy at this point knows that her mom knows more than she's leading on to but her mom's just holding on to that but of course she does eventually reveal as you all know that freddy was a child murderer who got off because of a technicality uh and so the parents took it into their own hands um and it seems like the mom because she says like he can't get you he said mom killed him um I killed him I feel like she really was kind of like the leader of the situation like I feel like she was the parent that was like okay we have got to go get him and maybe it was both Nancy and her father but I feel like definitely her mom which is probably another reason why Freddie is so determined to get Nancy and save her for the last because of who her mother is and what she was responsible for and what she did so he's really trying to get back at her by getting at Nancy and of course now we have Nancy has really kind of figured out this whole situation or at least she thinks she has and how to kind of get Freddy. Apologize I kind of skip past talking about the Don scene again uh, but in that scene just to kind of reference it uh, we figure out that she's able to kind of bring Glenn into her dream because she's able to talk to him through her dream while he's awake and then of course inevitably he ends up falling asleep on her which almost screws her over but that's just another bit of really cool information that's kind of put into this of course Glenn's death scene like I mentioned iconic love that scene and yes I know all of the little like behind the scenes facts like it's filmed the room was upside down, the amount of blood, the fact that they had like this big leak that happened, um, all those cool really fun facts about this film. I have heard about them. Um, one thing that, and I've talked about this before in uh, when I've talked about this film on my channel, but when I was younger a friend of mine were watching this on like the Stars channel and for those of you who are old enough to remember back in the day they used to do the thing where they would do like behind the scenes facts of films um and so in between commercials and we were watching it and they were you know sharing all the behind the scenes facts they were like they were using so much spandex like it was going out of style and it was because it's the 80s and that part just hallway and that just made me laugh so much it also put like a little bit of comedic relief while being like terrified teenager watching this film um because I actually I don't think I was in high school I think it was in like junior high and so every time I watch that scene I just think of that quote uh, and it kind of gives a little bit of relief and makes me laugh a little but of course love that scene it's iconic that's really doesn't need much more to say about that 
Um, other than I do think it's funny that his mom comes in and wakes him up like he's asleep and she wakes him up and then tells him that he needs to go to sleep. Like she's like, you need to go back to sleep. Like turn all your stuff off. And I'm like, you just came in and woke him up, lady. Like he was already asleep. That just made me laugh while I was watching this. But then of course, let's talk about the final act of this. We'll talk about the final act of this film when Nancy is now going after Freddy. She's told her father sort of her plans. She's relying on him to show up, which he almost drops the ball on her. The men, the men in this film, very, very disappointing. They're just dropping the ball left and right. Sorry, men, but they are. Um, they are letting Nancy down all across the board. But of course, Nancy, you know, falls asleep. And of course she goes into her basement, um, which then of course ends up leading into the boiler room again. <laughs> Just like all the other dream sequences but that's so cool like that's just the way this film is shot those scenes of montaging uh from one location to another and being able to bring characters in and just and it's so smoothly done like there's no flashiness to it there's no jumps um no lighting changes really like they just smoothly make it from her going into her basement, stairs into a boiler, and eh, into the boiler room, and it's just perfectly smooth, and I love the way that they did that, and I love the fact that they didn't use any fancy tricks in that moment. Uh, they just, it seemed almost like they just shot it in one smooth take. It's done so well, um, and of course, Nancy kicks ass in this. She's before she goes to sleep, she's set up all these booby traps around her house, and I kind of forget about that as well. Uh, so that's really cool, so that way when she does inevitably pull Freddy out, she can have all these traps to kind of try to like get him and kill him. At first, she is seemingly ex successfully able to pull Freddy out of the dream world and kind of get him, but she isn't able to kill him, like she sets him on fire. She does all these things. Her father is finally able to see that she was right because he finally fucking shows up. But she tells Freddy that she is not scared of him. That, she, you know, this is a dream. She knows it's a dream. He can go away. She takes away any power that she has given him because that's really kind of what it is. They. Are scared by him so therefore it gives him more powers very Santa Claus effect like if you believe in me uh, or even Tinkerbell clap for attention and we and Nancy are led to believe that her no longer believing in him and knowing that it's a dream and not being scared of him comes to his defeat which I think would have been very interesting if that's how the film had ended. Of course, it is not. Uh, they definitely ended to give us a continue on to sequels. I don't know. I do believe people that know a little bit more behind the scenes info, you can tell me, but I think they did that on purpose because they wanted to be able to make sequels because obviously sequels make money. I do believe that that was something that was done on purpose. So of course, would have been a cool way to end the film, but then, but it doesn't. Nancy kind of dissipate, kind of see Freddy dissipate, and Nancy walks out of the bedroom door and she goes and she appears in the front of her house. And there is quite a bit of a lighting change. It goes from being a very dark situation, it's very dark inside the house when she's dealing with Freddy. To being a light and it seems like everything's okay and her mom's alive and her friends are alive and everything's good and it was all just a dream and Nancy gets in the car to drive off with her friends when the top of the car comes down and it's Freddy's sweater and she realizes that it's not over uh, and she's taken away and then her mom of course with that quite cheesy blow up moment, blow up doll moment is, which 
Back when I saw this, it was terrifying. It's not as scary now because it's a blow up doll and you can definitely tell it's quite obvious, but she gets sucked in through the door and the film ends. Um, I, <laughs> I do love that ending. I mean, like I said, it would have been really cool if it had ended with Nancy just defeating Freddy, but of course we wouldn't have sequels and uh, this would not be a series. So of course, terrifying ending. First time watching it, terrifying. Uh, this is just one of those films that there's still parts of it that get to me, even though, like I said, I've seen it so many times, but I still love it. And of course, it'll always have a special place in my heart. Cause like I said, I remember watching it with my friend when I was in like junior high, going into high school. Um, and yeah, so this is just one of those films that I will always love, will always have a special place in my heart and uh, definitely still holds up. So. You know, let me know what your thoughts are on the original A Nightmare on Elm Street. What is kind of your favorite dream sequence or just a favorite scene from this? Uh, definitely go ahead and leave some other fun facts um, down below if you would like. Whatever. Um, <laughs> let me know which Nightmare on Elm Street film is your favorite. If you did enjoy this, please do give it a big old thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for more horror related content. And I will see you all again later with another video. Bye.